the Spetz 12 compact 12 gauge firearm. That's right, that's the end of the barrel. This thing was a load of fun to shoot. We're gonna talk about the experiences that we had and uh, show you some footage coming up next on GB Guns. So what you saw there in the slow-mo footage coming into this was some, uh, well, were some Russian zinc slugs that I was shooting out of here uh, because they're slugs and they're still lightweight thanks to the zinc. Yes, the bolt does hold open. It's got a little tab right there. For more details on that kind of stuff, check out the tabletop video. Here we're just talking about shooting. So shooting this thing, of course you've got a short barrel, right, which means not as much back pressure to be gained for the gas system. It is an adjustable gas system. I ran it through a few different settings and tried some very lightweight loads that I figured weren't gonna run uh, all the way through some heavier stuff just to see what it felt like, especially having that SBA3 brace on the end. I gotta say, very controllable. I was told in advance not to expect it to run anything less than size six shot and that's about where the limit was. You'll see that, uh, of course, the lightweight bird stuff just wasn't gonna run in it. But the gun is loads of fun and uh, still very practical running size six and bigger because, let's face it, this is a personal defense weapon. This is a close range, compact, get out of my face kind of 12 gauge. And uh, you're not gonna be running birdshot for that kind of stuff anyways. But uh, recoil I found to be very manageable. It was a lot of fun to shoot. We kind of ran out of time and fair weather to go into some of the other details that I normally would uh, before. Unfortunately, I've got to send this back. This is on loan to me. But uh, really cool. Lots of fun project. This is based on the SDS Imports Lynx 12 and produced by Advanced Weapon Systems in Indiana. The Spets 12. I'll let you see the shooting footage and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So perhaps a long shot, but worth testing, these uh, Aguila mini shells, now these are the slugs, in just dry cycling, it looked like the long feed ramp on the uh, Saigon 12 style magazine was going to be enough to make this work. That's quite a jump it's got to make. Let's see if it'll do it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, little wishful thinking there, not going to run your uh, Aguila mini shells. So, I only have a couple left, but we're going to try these Federal True Ball low recoil slugs. These are a one ounce slug. See how they uh, run in the Spets 12. This is a five round magazine from the uh, SDS Cheetah. Runs just fine. Smells good. Next too. up, we've got some Herders Select Defense. This is a multi defense load which has one 0.65 inch round ball and six number one buck, uh, moving at 1300 feet per second. See how the Spets 12 likes it. Violent recoil <laughs> runs. To move straight into the soft stuff, we got a variety of uh, lightweight shot. This is seven and a half, 1200 feet per second. Uh, the Browning, which has a, a slicker hole case to it. So maybe that will uh, add to some reliability, maybe not. Looking for a safe place to put this. So we're standing in a big old mud puddle. So <laughs> trying to not get everything nasty. See how the gun runs? Oh, looks like not gonna run this. So giving up on our lighter loads, we're gonna stick to the heavies. The softest, aside from that low recoil slug that I could think of would be this Wolf. It doesn't even state the velocity on there and it's only a one ounce slug. But uh, this is, let's face it, going to be a defensive weapon. So it's all about slug and buck. We know buck will work. Let's see if these lightweight slugs work. And they do. So what are your thoughts on this? I'd say as a specialty gun, which it is indeed, 
It does have some limitations to the application, but uh, that's what all specialty guns have. I mean, that's what makes them special, right? Um, recoil, not that bad at all. I was pleasantly surprised how manageable it is. It does have this rubber bumper back here. Bumper doesn't have any cracks. I thought there were at first, but those are just mold marks. Um, that helps with uh, preserving the life of the receiver and making things a little more pleasant on the shooter. The gun ran just fine on everything that it was supposed to run on. Stuff that it wasn't, it didn't. So, you know, can't fault it there. Taking a look at our bolt, and this was a used gun when it got to me. Put, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen rounds through it and uh, have to send it back. Like I said, it's on loan. You can see somewhere, or rather breaking in, happening on... Uh, those lugs there, but I mean, come on, it's it's an SDS Imports Lynx 12 that has been shortened up, so you know you're going to get the same quality and strength that you have with the Lynx 12, just in a more compact setup. Everything there looks pretty standard. The uh, back end of the carrier here, you can see, has uh, finish wear, but no galling, no mashing. So that's important to note that uh, this gun's probably going to last a while. And I uh, wish I could hold on to it longer. It was certainly a lot of fun. I love wiping out 12 gauge because, uh, well, you can see how large everything is. It's really easy to get to. Everything inside looks to be still in solid condition, good, healthy shape. And uh, there's not. Not that I know of anyways, a whole lot of other options out there to be able to have 12 gauge with a detachable magazine in this size of configuration and uh, this easy to run. I mean, it's it's an AK. It, it's going to run. And clearing malfunctions, etc. is not that hard if you're familiar with AKs at all. It's just a standard AK. The uh, gun ran pretty good. It was a lot of fun. I think this would be a great option for a uh, hostile environment truck gun type scenario or uh, an urban defense setup. Come on, the bolt goes too far forward. This is always the tricky part in putting AKs back in, at least for me. So when you get the bolt back in, obviously you need the tail to be flush here so that it's going to clear. And then sometimes when the bolt goes too far forward, it doesn't want to line up on its tracks. I can keep that in place while rotating here. There we go. And then get our spring back in. It's got the extended dust cover on there. And uh, it does have, you might have seen this in the tabletop, this extra safety spring-loaded tab on the back here that sort of locks the top cover in place. That thing is... Uh, not always the easiest to deal with when putting the gun back together or taking it apart, but it sure beats the heck out of having your dust cover pop loose uh, on a high re recoil format gun like a 12 gauge. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Spetz 12. There we go. Everything back together. This uh, was a lot of fun to shoot. I know I've already said that a billion times, but that's because it, it's true. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want 12 gauge in such a compact package with the ability to swap mags to swap loads super easily. You get the last room or you get the bolt hold open. You've got a nice extended magazine release to make it easy. The extended safety with the tab down here. The only thing on this gun that's different from the way they come out of the box is the pistol grip. This is the Malot style larger grip, which I prefer anyways because I've got larger hands. Do you have a rail mount there if you wanted to slap a red dot or something on here? But uh, pretty cool package. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.